Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at collinear features and how to remove collinear features from our data model. We're going to go ahead and remove the redundancy and collinear features from our ongoing data project from DoorDash. If you haven't watched our previous video, we'll leave a link down in the description box. Let's do a quick recap. The goal of this take home assignment is to build a model to predict the estimated time taken for a delivery, which is defined as the duration of time between the order creation and the actual delivery time. In the previous video, we created predictive features and prepared the data for modeling. Now let's begin with the next part, which is to remove redundancy. All right, previously we had a hundred columns in our data set. Big data sets help our model, yet it might have drawbacks too. When you have too many predictors, it will slow us down and cause collinearity. Now, what is collinearity, you ask? Collinearity means that your variables are correlated with each other. It means both of them have the same effect on the model, which is why one of them is enough for your model. So when you have correlated features, that makes it hard to interpret your model. So simply put, that will hurt your model's performance and we do not want that. So now it's time to check how many of these features will actually help our model. One easy way to do that is by drawing a correlation matrix. This matrix shows us the correlation between our features. Our heat map will use the data of the correlation. We will use the core method to create data showing correlation. Now it's time to develop a mask. Why are we developing a mask? Well, the correlation matrices will repeat itself along the main diagonal and which is why it will duplicate itself. So we will slice it to remove the duplicate data. To do that, first we will create an array filled with ones and then we will assign the upper side one and the lower side zero and a mask will be applied where one is set. That's how we develop a mask. And then we will use Seaborn Diverging Palette to show the density by using different color tones. After that, it is time to use the Seaborn Heat Map method as an argument, core and masks. Okay, that's the approach and now let's do it. So this part could take some time to run because we're calculating a correlation matrix in the dimension of 100 by 100. So to have a better visualization, we will only take one triangle because other triangle is only just a symmetry, you know, like if one triangle is A by B, the other one's B by A. So let's create a mask and let's run the kernel. Okay. All right. Let's set up a matplotlib figure. It's going to look like this. Now to the same cell, let's create or add a custom diverging color map. It's going to look pretty much the same. And let's add the heat map. Okay, and here we go. So let's take a closer look. It looks like there is an issue with one of the predictors and that would be category Indonesian. So let's check what's up with that and can use train DF category Indonesian describe. As you can see, there's a bunch of zeros as value. So we can drop these features hence because it has no effect. Now to test the correlations, we will define two functions. The first one helps us to get the redundant values and the second one, on the contrary, helps us find the top correlated features. Let's first use the get redundant pairs function and then the get top correlation function and let's print the top absolute correlations. As you can see the kernel's busy we will wait. Okay, so this function helps us find correlated features by finding redundant ones and then sorting n of them in descending order. It also prints the correlation score near them as you can see. Now it looks like total on shift dashers and total busy dashers are redundant because they are highly correlated. So let's reshape our data set according to the results. Since they are also represented by busy dashes ratio, we uh, will drop these. 
And the next one would be estimated store to consumer driving duration. And that seems to be highly correlated to non-prep duration. So driving and order place duration is correlated with estimated non-prep duration. We did create estimated non-prep duration. So which is why we will drop that one and keep the original one. And finally, market IDs are correlated to each other. Let's drop these values as well. And after that, let's concatenate the dummy variables with them. Okay. We're going to drop created at market ID, store ID, store primary category, actual delivery time and order protocol. Now we first drop the features we used early for creating features and dummy variables from our original data set. Then we will add the dummies to our data set. However, we won't add market ID because you can see that in the list, market ID one and two are correlated. After that, we will drop other correlated values from our data set too. So we won't concatenate market ID and we'll drop the other highly correlated features. And let's align the data type over the data set. Let's take a look at it as well. Okay. All right, we get rid of many features that mainly add no value to our model. So let's take a look at the shape of our data frame. So let's use the shape function. Okay, so we have 90 columns. For the sake of our models, let's check the correlations again by using our function. Let's wait a second and here we are. It looks like we have some features that are correlated with each other, like order protocol. There's a bunch of them and that is a dummy variable. That's why we don't concatenate them. Also, let's drop the correlated feature again and repeat the code. Okay, we're repeating the same code. Okay, wow, we still have some correlated features. Now it's time to overcome the problem through feature engineering. Feature engineering is a technique that creates new variables. The aim here is to simplify the model and increase its accuracy by using new variables as predictors. So let's create new features. The new features would be person distinct item of total, which is equal to the number of distinct items divided by total items and average price per item, which is a subtotal divided by total items. And that's it. Let's run the correlation again. All right, we've got issues with minimum item price, maximum item price. So uh, let's create a new feature by subtracting the minimum item price from maximum item price. And we will get rid of the correlated features that way. Okay, that looks good. And let's take a look at the shape of our data frame again. And we're down to 82, right? We have finally solved the correlation issue and our feature number has dropped from 100 to 82, which is a good deal. And thanks for watching this video. We will continue with multicollinearity check in the next video. So stay tuned for that and keep practicing.